Hi everyone, like I've told you before, always have a look at the points of order at the end of any Commons debate or any Prime Minister questions, anywhere where they have points of order actually. There's some really interesting stuff that comes out there. Um, and yesterday was no different. I don't know if uh, you're a regular viewer or not. Around mid-May I posted two other Labour on Fire videos. One of those highlighted Ed Miliband's tactic of giving way every time he was asked. He had to start ready regarding the opposition member's constituency as a reply every time. Nandy employed that same strategy yesterday to great effect. Watch this. Give a second reading to this bill and with that, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'll sit down. The Secretary of State is a born performer and he was clearly having fun today. I was glad for him that he couldn't see the faces behind him when we reached the planning section. I suspect that he may need to reach over to this side of the house a little more over the coming weeks and months than he's just done in that performance today. So how is it that he's come to this house with lots of jokes and lots of smart phrases, lots of slogans, but nothing in this bill that will turn this around? Only two regions of our country have been given the backing that they needed from their government. To right now she's baiting the opposition so that she's got the statistic ready for when the opposition member finishes. It to work. And if the honourable gentleman would like to tell me how he thinks that can work, believe me, I'm all ears. The, the honourable lady said um, that over the past 10, 10 years or under the Conservative government there'd been lack of investment in the regions. Well, Harlow, as, she, as you know, has a fair bit of deprivation, but under this government, they've been levelling up for the past 10 years, an advanced manufacturing centre, millions of pounds, an enterprise zone, millions of pounds, a new hospital coming, hundreds of millions of pounds, a new road... Let me tell him the reality of what levelling up has done in Essex. £292 and a half million pounds taken by his government from the people of Essex, even when levelling up funds are taken into That's account. Right. That is the reality even of levelling up for the people that he represents. No wonder lose. he sits there with such a glum face listening to that record and invested for the long-term recovery of our local economies. I, I certainly will. Hey, Madam Deputy Speaker, is this Conservative government that's invested £56 million from the Levelling Up Fund, hey, hey. 31.7 million to bus back better, 500 brand new home office jobs, a 17.6 million Kids Grove town deal that's unlocked the refurbishment of a sports centre they closed in 2017 because they couldn't be bothered to spend a single pound coin. Whereas in Labour's legacy is a PFI hospital with 200 fewer beds than the old one, sitting 20 million. Let me give him the reality of what has happened in SoCon Trent. For those, for all taking into account every single penny of levelling up money that has been allocated to Stoke on Trent, his constituents are £27.7 million worse off yep. as a consequence That's of this government. Yeah. That is the Tory premium. That is the premium the that you pay for having a Tory government. And if you have any inch of conscience about the plight of some of those young people that I met, he will be standing up and challenging this government on their record of not delivering for Stoke on Trent. And I was starting to wonder what they had against Yorkshire, but then yesterday I saw that they'd also casually scrapped the Goulburn link, a decision that appears to have been made in the face of pressure from Tory MPs ahead of a confidence vote in the Prime Minister. And then I saw that the member for the Isle of Wight, just give me a moment, the member for the Isle of Wight said he'd voted for the Prime Minister to keep his job after receiving assurances that there would be a funding review for his council. Can I ask the Secretary of State if his council? Can I ask? Can, can I, yeah, I, I certainly will. But can I ask the Secretary of State? It, did he have knowledge of this? Did he sign it off? Because let me say to him, that sounds awfully like corruption from me. And please let me. Yeah. She completely misunderstands and she gets it completely wrong. Um, this is where my point of order search led me to. Several years ago. The Prime Minister realised that the Isle of Wight was the only island in the UK that doesn't have a multiply. So the Scilly Isles gets a multiply of 1.5, the Scottish Islands gets the Scottish Islands needs allowance. And I said to the Prime Minister, will you commit to rectifying this wrong, which is a policy flaw? And he said yes. And I reminded him of that promise beforehand. So did I ask for a bag of cash? No. And it is completely untrue for her to say that, so she can get up now and apologise. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and of course I'll give him the opportunity. Uh, 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 Madam De Madam order! Order! That means sit down. Now, this is a very sensitive point. I want to hear what the Honourable Lady has to say. Lisa Nandy. 
Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I, I, of course, gave the honourable member the right of reply, but I am quoting literally and directly from a quote on his own website. So, if those are not his words and those are not correct, I leave it up to honourable members to judge. I am simply quoting his words to the Secretary of State and asking whether this is correct. Because today we have had a report that, sa that says, in stark terms, that this is a department. C corrupt point of order, Bob Seeley. This is a very serious allegation. Corruption has been alleged, and there is no basis. Okay, as you can see, she's clearly rattled this guy's cage. And in my experience as an adult, when someone responds like this after you've rattled their cage, it's usually, now, it's usually because they're guilty. Side of the argument against the other, because I don't have the evidence before me of whatever words were published and whatever words have been said. So I would ask the Honourable Lady, no, no, she can't possibly, can't possibly be looking at her phone while I'm speaking to her. She can't possibly be. No, she can't possibly be looking at her phone while I'm speaking to her. Yeah, clearly, the Speaker of the House hasn't noticed. Every single member of the House of Commons utilises their mobile phones in this place. I would ask the Honourable Lady to get us over this part of the debate, and we can come back to this matter at another time. Would the Honourable Lady please withdraw the... Withdraw the don't shout at me when I'm speaking from the chair. Needless to say, you're looking at a lifelong Tory here. So much for impartiality. Honourable Lady, please withdraw the allegation of corruption, which is a very serious one, and perhaps find some other words to say that she disagrees with what the Honourable Gentleman for the Isle of Wight has said, and then we can proceed with the debate and, and if necessary, come back to this point at another point. Lisa and Andy. Madam Deputy Speaker, out of deference to you, of course, I will, um, I will rephrase my words yeah. in a manner that is far more acceptable to you. This looks awfully dodgy to me, Secretary of State. Yeah. Yeah. Was this signed off by you or by your department? Right. I was happy. I would certainly never, never disrespect the chair by reading from my phone, so I won't do it now. But the words are there on the Honourable Gentleman's website, and if anybody cares to look at them, they can yeah. draw their own yeah. conclusions. I certainly will. So I do take exception, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, with what the Honourable, uh, the Honourable Lady has just said. How dare she suggest that members on this side yeah, of the House yeah. aren't standing up there for, yeah, for their community yeah, yeah. when we are quite obviously aggrieved with the uh, allegation that she has just made uh, against a fellow colleague. Um, so yes, we have got a right to chunter at her comments. Yeah. She's absolutely got a right to challenge me on my comments, and so have her constituents. They might want to know why Kent has had £276.8 million taken from its budget by this government over the last decade. No, I won't give way. Because order, it's order, 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 Mr Gullis. Stop it. Sorry, Madam Deputy Speaker, perhaps I could address directly the Honourable Member who is chuntering again. If he cared one iota for his constituency, he wouldn't be chuntering at me. He'd be asking the Secretary of State where the missing £27 million has gone. No, we've heard plenty from him, and it's about time that he listened. And I will give way to the Honourable Gentleman. For why did the people of the North East turn down Labour's policy of elected regional government, and why didn't they try it on anywhere else? Well, uh, perhaps, perhaps the Honourable Gentleman might ask the Secretary of State because it was his policy adviser who led the campaign against it. I will give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I, I'm grateful. I just want to make a couple of very simple points. Firstly, there was a very good brownfield site fund recently which her colleagues' constituents could have applied to, in which Gloucester did so successfully. And secondly, I do find it curious that the Honourable Lady keeps referring back to the regional agency, which is one of the most disastrous organisations. Yeah. But can I just remind him, when he talks about Gloucestershire, that if he wants to challenge the last Labour government, Gloucestershire has had £91.2 million taken out of their pockets by this government, and perhaps he might have something to say to the Secretary of State about that. So there you have it, a fantastic performance from Lisa and Andy, um, doing nothing more than utilising statistics on each constituency of the opposition. If you like the video guys, please remember to like, subscribe and share. It really does help. Thanks.